if you want um, a picture of Australian music in general, you must understand that firstly, it's a very young country. Uh, Australian Federation was only achieved at the beginning of the 20th century. Until the end of World War II, everything was dominated by English culture. And so much of our music in the first half of the 20th century, it sounds English. After World War II, there was a big program of immigration. People came from all over the world and our population grew. It's still very small by your standards, but it grew. So now we have a country about the size of Europe. So you have an idea of the expanse of land and the few people. Once you move away from the coastline and the main cities, it's very sparsely populated. So what I'm trying to say is that because of this, composers who wanted to become composers, serious composers, they worked to a great extent in isolation. I think you're playing the Agnew Third Sonata, aren't you? See, Agnew is a good example. Uh, there he was, interested in a kind of post scrabinesque style, but there was no one around him that could tell him anything about that. So he had to discover it for himself. And around him, everyone else thought, oh, it doesn't sound English, it can't be any good. And so this was repeated around the country, and so the pioneer composers, scattered all over this huge country, had to battle for themselves to find their own language. But it was also a strength, because it meant they didn't have any kind of weight of tradition telling them you should write this way. We haven't got them. And so when a true uh, innovation occurred, somewhere around 1960 and later, it was mostly a combination of self-discovery and, of course, influences from wherever the composers went. It was for a long time traditional that composers had to go abroad to finish their education. We didn't offer composition courses until somewhere around 1960. And so composers before that time, they would go to England. So they'd go to the University of London or wherever and study there with an English master. After that date, they began to go elsewhere. They started going to America, Germany, whatever was possible. Uh, travel was always difficult for Australians because if you look at a map, you'll notice that we're a long way from anywhere. And when I went to San Francisco to study, uh, it was cheaper than to go by boat than fly. <laughs> so I got on a boat, spent three weeks sailing there, having a good time, and then we arrived and I had to start working. Uh, I went abroad to study, not composition, but this. And I went to Egon Petri because my Australian piano teacher was also someone who studied with Bozzoni and with Petri. So there was a kind of double injection of the Bozzoni aesthetic. And I remember towards the end of my studies with Egon Petri, this was from 1958 to 1961. Uh, Petri said to me, 
you are now a member of a very exclusive club and I'm giving you the torch and you have to pass it on. So it was a kind of nice way of explaining what tradition means in music.